Hi, and welcome to this episode of our tutorial series on the AVR framework version 3. In this episode, I want to talk about the replication components. The replication components handle the synchronization of movement and multiplayer, meaning the replication component detects movement of an actor and replicates a new position to all the other actors in the other instances. Let's take a look at this example. Here we have a server client environment. The active replication component sends a position of the cube to um, the uh, other cube in the other instances. Um, the server currently owns the cube. That means he is in charge of dictating the position and all the other clients have to, um, uh, have to position their cube accordingly to the servers. Also, we have um, two pawns, one for the server and one for the client. And we see that the pawn of the client is being owned by the, um, by, by the client, obviously. And he then dictates the position to the, uh, to the pawn on the server. Meaning whoever owns, this, uh, owns an actor is also char in charge of dictating its position. Um, now, let's take a look at what happens if the client grabs a cube. He not only grabs it, but he only takes, uh, also takes ownership of the cube. And now he, uh, the client is in charge of dictating the position of the cube to all the other instances. That means uh, this, the, the cube on the client side now has a true position and all the other cubes in the other instances will have to um, position their cube accordingly to what the client dictates. That's because when you grab something, you, you want to ensure that you define where it is and all the other ones should just follow that position. Um, there are basically two kinds of replication components in the AVR framework now. Um, one is the actor replication component seen here, which handles the movement of actors. So for example, the pawn, whether I move or not, or the cube, whether he moves in position or not. And we have the component replication component, which handles the movement of um, specific components. So for example, this hand is a component and these would be synchronized using the component replication component. But both of them basically works the same way. They both see a location and see whether something moves. And then when something has moved, it dictates the other instances on the other clients to, to uh, move accordingly. Um, the replication components have to track and synchronize a lot of movement information and consequently use a lot of resources. Um, it is advised to only use them for unpredictable movement, like when you try to uh, synchronize physics or if you try to synchronize grabbing, for example, me grabbing this pen, this would be synchronized using a um, active replication component. Or if I want to synchronize elements like these hands, these are very unpredictable. There's nothing that um, indicates where the hand will move next. That's why the current location has to be fetched and has to be synchronized as soon as possible. Okay, so let's set up the replication component inside Unreal. So now inside the editor, um, I've prepared this very simple example. We have a cube and um, this cube is set to simulate physics. And now if we take a look at it, so multiplayer, we can see that both sides simulate physics. But um, I've created a radio force here and we see that if I do something on the server, the client doesn't see that. If I do something on the client, the server doesn't see that. So both of them do not replicate. So the first thing we always have to do is if something is network relevant, we have to set um, on the actor, set it to replicates, but that also doesn't replicate the movement. So if we hit play, it will still not affect the other one. So the first approach that we could do is set it to replicate movement. And now if I save and compile, um, this is the basic Unreal implementation of replicating movement. And this already works. So if I move this on the server, it dictates movement. If I try to move it on the client, you can see that it 
struggles and the server will always try to correct the position. So this already works quite fine. An alternative way of reaching this goal would be using the replication component. So we can add the actor replication component here. Um, very importantly, we don't need the replicate component anymore, um, no replicate movement anymore, uh, because this is now being done by the actor replication component. Now, if we hit play, we can see that they synchronize movement, and we can see that the other one follows. And if I move it on here, it will try to correct this position as well. So uh, why do we need this actor replication component? Um, it's basically because we want more features, not only the, the physics replication, um, which in Unreal is also not 100% reliable. Um, we wanted to synchronize grabbing and other movements as well. Um, so let's take a look in how to do that. So now if we add the grabbing component, add the grabbing component and we set the snapping tab to physics, for example. Um, now we can, we can see that if we hit play, You can pick up the object and it moves accordingly on the other on the other player. And uh, the same works if we pick up the object on the client side. It also moves um, accordingly on the server. That's because the the client now has control, and you can see that the server is trying to synchronize that. You can also see the delay, and the physics from the from the client is now being applied and replicated to the server. Additionally, you can set uh, quite a number of parameters on the actor replication component. So you can set the interpolation speed, uh, meaning how fast the um, client will follow. If it's too high, then the movement won't be fluent. So one thing that the, uh, that the other person, uh, that the other clients always do is let me quickly grab that, um, is they try to interpolate between the location so the clients also see a fluent movement as good as possible. And if the interpolation is too high, uh, interpolation speed is too high, then we would be uh, seeing a kind of stop motion. So um, try to tweak that number to accordingly how fast you, you want the um, the object for uh, to follow um, tolerance also um, so the actor replication um, bonds has a tolerance on uh, whether an object is close enough so he doesn't have to synchronize the position anymore so if the the tolerance is um, is, uh, is is too high then the two uh, then the two elements can be can be a bit out of sync. But if it's too small, then he has to uh, always correct the position. So try to find a nice balance between how far, um, how disaligned the, the elements can be. And the search tick interval um, is basically how fast, he, uh, how often he should search to synchronize positions. So quickly, just to recap, um, remember to always hit the replicate option. Um, I think the actor replication sets it automatically. So if you have the actor replication component on it, it will set it automatically to replicate. And uh, remember, if you want to synchronize grabbing, uh, then you need the actor replication component. So if I, for example, remove the actor replication component, um, we can see that if we hit play, the cube basically just gets in uh, the initial position, but it's not able to follow. That's because the uh, whole grabbing process is reliant on the actor replication. Okay, and now we can make a simple example of the component replication component. Um, for that, I'll, um, I'll just put in 
another another small cube in here and maybe make that a bit smaller maybe something like that and um the component replication command you only need to synchronize the movement of components so to uh, create movement here i will simply um set this cube to simulate physics i know it's not the best example but uh, there are currently not that many examples um so one of the most uh prominent example is at the movement of the pawn itself because it's unpredictable and has to be synchronized so on the pawn you will see um that it has the component replication component so if we take a look inside the um um inside uh, uh yeah the normal pawn we have the head here and the head has to be synchronized and we have the com um the component replication component on here and um it is set to uh replicate the the head and and the torso and uh the way it does that is it searches for um the component that has the tag replicated on it. So um, this tag and this tag have to be the same. That and um, it tries to replicate the movement of um, every every component that has this tag on it. Um, so let's try to replicate that on our uh, replication cube. If we simulate physics on it, we will see that and add the component replication component um, com replication. And the actor still is set to replicate. Perfect. And this we will set down here. We will see that if we move this thing, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. It, the the component is not being affected. But now, if we align the tags, so set the component tag on the on the little cube, and then we can ensure that this this uh, sub component is is being replicated. So if we now hit play. And we move this cube. We can see that this the other cube is mo uh, being moved accordingly, even though the uh, the actor itself isn't actually replicated. Okay. So um, as I said, the the most prominent example is the um, is the pawn because it's the only one who has like really unpredictable component movement. Um, but there are probably other examples of that as well. So you can see on the controller left and the controller right, they also have this tag uh, replicated on it. So the replication, uh, the, the component replication component uh, tries to synchronize these. And if you want to adjust the speed in which they're synchronized, you can set them here so that the hand could move more fluently or is more precise or lags more behind. So you can adjust your network traffic that way. Okay, um, I hope that wasn't too confusing, and um, this is everything that I wanted to show in this episode, so I see you in the next episode.